Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. <clears throat> I hope you guys had an awesome 4th of July. I've uh, been kind of doing the bare minimum the last few days, just enjoying the holiday. We went to a friend's house and had a barbecue during that day and um, brought the dogs and he, he played with this little tiny Yorkie the whole time. It was really cute. Um, but yeah, this weekend is just catching up. We leave on Wednesday to head back to Michigan to see my um, brand new nephew. So I'm so excited. We leave uh, Wednesday, come back on Monday. And this Sunday, or this coming Saturday the 13th, is the 10th annual Nicole Wilkins Classic. So if any of you guys are in the Michigan, like southern Michigan area around Detroit, um, definitely come by and say hi, even if you're not doing the show you can come and just hang out and um i'll be there all day in the morning and then all day in the evening so um come check it out it's not expensive to come at all and um yeah it'll be good to meet you guys in person it's always cool to meet you guys in person after just chit chatting um on the internet so a couple announcements before we get started with today's topic um <laughs> We are two weeks out from the 10-week photo shoot ready challenge. Uh, for those of you guys who have not done challenges, any of the challenges before, it's not just a program where you're getting numbers to fill in the blanks. Um, it is an actual full, complete meal plan um, for uh, vegans and vegetarians and non-vegans and vegetarians. And this time, it is structured completely different. So we have three phases for the nutrition, where each phase, the, thing, uh, the nutrition plan changes as well as three phases for the workout programs. Um, the workout programs are in home as well as in the gym. So if you do both, you can kind of swap back and forth. If you solely work out at the gym, uh, you can just use those workouts. If you work out at home, um, you can use those. So we try to cater to everyone. Anyone around the world can enter. Um, the, different, the differences I've made this time is Instead of just having 15 different variations for the meals um, where you can interchange them, I have created an entire database of foods structured into categories so that you can basically swap them out and have like infinite number of meals to choose from. Um, all of the macros are provided, so a lot, a lot of you guys do like to follow the macros. If you are not familiar and don't know how to do that, um, I do recommend following the meal plan as written or making the swaps as recommended, which will be much easier to uh, understand once you actually see the plan. So it, it is something that I hope will go off very well um, because I know that there are a lot of people watching this that have specific food requirements and needs. Um, maybe you're da dairy intolerant. Maybe you don't like you know specific meats or you don't eat meat, but you're not a vegetarian. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can swap in and kind of make it your own, which is pretty cool. Uh, the biggest thing with any of the challenges is really just getting consistent with the plan and having something to follow so you don't have to create your own. And uh, I know that a lot of times we start with something and if it's not working immediately, we listen to a friend who is following the paleo diet or another friend who's following the keto diet or another friend who's doing a low carb or carb cycle and then we think, oh, maybe I should do that. Oh, maybe I should do that. And then every two weeks or so you change up the program and don't really know if any of them are working because you don't give them long enough to, to, to actually do anything. Um, so the challenges are a great way for you to get just on a structured plan um, and the winner of this specific 10-week photo shoot ready challenge, which is the longest challenge of the year, will get a, a full full trip. Of course, not a, not a half trip. Um, they will get flown out to California and um, will hang out the whole weekend. I will. Uh, last year we had Holly Colville win, and the year prior to that we had Shelly Dipple win. Um, we get your hair and makeup done. We have a professional photographer that comes out and I am on hand either do, taking some photos with you or just managing the entire shoot and helping you look your absolute best that day. So it's just basically about you being pampered. Um, a man could win it too, so it's not just women. And yes, men typically do get some makeup done for photo shoots to avoid the shine and make your skin look really, real, look really nice. Um, you do get those images at the end of the shoot, so... Um, it's really cool to document your progress if that's something that you are interested in. So, um, just wanted to let you guys know there's two weeks left before that challenge starts and once it begins, um, it is not available for sale anymore. So even if it isn't exactly the right time for you to do it, 
um, it is, it, I do recommend, um, you can always purchase it and do it later. So you don't have to do it at the exact time it's running, although that is recommended if you want to win any of the prizes. Um, so other than that, today we are going to talk about how to structure your workout program. This was a pretty, um, commonly asked question and believe it or not, I get a lot of questions about this in my DMs on social media and stuff. So I thought today would be a great way for me to just break it down for you guys. Um, with any of the challenges or programs, um, I do all that for you so you don't have to do it. But for those of you guys who are members of NicoleWilkins.com, as you know, there is like 500 different videos and different workouts. So sometimes if you're not familiar with how to structure your plan, you could go in there and say, oh my gosh, like what am I supposed to do with all these workouts? Um, so I'm going to tell you, this is my notes. I wrote it all out. So I'm just going to go step by step. I encourage you to get out your piece of paper and take notes. Um, if you're doing cardio, I would highly suggest, you know, um, rewatching this and taking notes just because, um, there is, it is much more, uh, I guess scientific and much more detailed than one may think. There are a lot of things to consider. So, um, with that said, step one is really understanding what your current goals are, um, what areas you want to improve on your body, because that's going to make a huge difference on how you structure the actual program itself. Um, you know, are you looking to specifically gain strength only? Are you looking to do a powerlifting program or uh, an Olympic lifting uh, meet? If it, it is sports specific, um, that is obviously something to take into consideration. Um, if you're getting ready for a bodybuilding show, there are different ways that you can structure your workouts based on your weak areas and your strong areas. Um, whether you're looking to lose body fat, which regardless of the type of exercise plan that you put together, any type of must, uh, strength training with resistance is going to help with fat loss. Um, so they're all going to decrease body fat. But if that is your goal, it is important to keep that in mind. Um, and or if you're looking to run a race, like if you're looking to do a marathon or a triathlon or something along those lines, your weight training program can um, drastically change based off of the training for that specific event. So number one is understand what your goals are. What are your current goals? If you have no idea, that's step one. So you have to figure that out. Um, and number two, and probably even more important or equally as important, um, how many days can you devote to a workout program? Are you only able to train two times a week? Are you only able to train three times, four times, five times? What can you realistically commit to every single week? Because that is going to drastically determine how you structure your workouts. Um, if somebody is not really working out at all right now, I don't recommend going straight to five days. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty big jump. It's kind of like going from not being able to run a mile to running five or six miles at a time. Um, you have a greater risk of injury. Um, your body is not going to recover as efficiently. You have to kind of work your way up to it. So if you're not working out at all, I would start with two or three times a week. That would be the bare minimum that I would recommend anyone weight train. Um, you can still see positive changes and um, have a lot. It's not just about the physical body outside. It's about the internal body as, as far as like um, ligaments and bone strengthening and heart health and um, all of those things. You know, keeping your cholesterol down, you know, making sure that your body is, is functioning optimally so that you can play with your grandkids or your kids. And if somebody is at, coming after you, you can run away. Like, I, that's kind of morbid thought, but it is important to be able to move the body and to be strong. And some ways that I kind of put that into action in my normal life is when I'm rearranging furniture or I'm lifting something up on the shelf in the garage or I am traveling with two 70 pound bags and I can't put them in the back of my car. Like those are our major reasons in life why it's important to stay strong and to stay and get strong, you need to add weights to your routine. And I'm sure a lot of you guys in this group, I don't have to lecture you about that because that is already your entire <laughs> <laughs> you're probably already interested in that, which is why you're part of this fitness community. Um, so how many days can you devote? Um, 
there was a couple questions on, um, you know, with the, with the kids being home during the summer and not having as much time to devote to a plan, can you get the same results lifting two or three times a week that you can in five or six times a week? And unfortunately, um, I don't believe that you can. Um, some of you guys might disagree with me, but I really don't believe that if your goal is to build muscle, that you will get as much um, success doing only two or three times a week versus five or six times a week. And the reason is because there's just no way you are able to hit each muscle group with enough volume and enough angles in two or three workouts a week that you would if you devoted your time to five or six. So I do think that if your goal is to build muscle, I would try to carve out some additional time to at least get, I would say, a sweet spot is about five days a week. Um, if you have been doing that for a while and you can add in a sixth day and your body is recovering efficiently, I think you're, gonna, you're going to see the most muscle gain in about five to six days a week. Um, two to three would be, like I said, the bare minimum that I would recommend where you can still have the healthy benefits but you're, and you can still build some muscle if you're more of a beginner, but over time you're going to be limited. Um, and at that point, that's when I would extend it to a, a few additional days if you can. So how many days can you devote? Um, the third question would be, where are you able to train? Um, are you able to train in the, in the actual gym itself? Um, are you training at home? And if you are training at home, what equipment do you have to work with? So um, you know, how you structure your workouts and what exercises you choose make a huge difference on uh, where you're training. You're going to have a lot more variety if you do train at the gym. I know some of you guys who watch these videos do train at home. Um, if you do train at home and your goal is to build muscle, you're going to want more weight than um, you know just 10 or 15 pound dumbbells. Um, you're going to want to try to... I would, I would highly recommend if you can at some point to just save money to get a dumbbell rack that's you know 5 to 50 pounds. Um, there, you know, you can probably find them for about 600 to $700. Yes, it's a big investment, but if you're working out at home and you're consistent with your training at home, it, in my opinion, as a fitness, uh, you know, fitness is my, is my life, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel a lot of this, you know, very similar, um, invest in the things that you're going to be using primarily. Um, and over a year, you're going to, a couple years that makes up for the gym membership if you are training at home. So I would try to, over time, try to incorporate more pieces of equipment um, with heavier weights that is going to allow you to have additional progressive resistance in order for you to build more muscle. The more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism is, the stronger you are, the healthier you, you know, the, the, the better. So where are you training? What equipment do you have available? Um, the fourth thing is you want to make sure that with whatever program you decide, with however many days you're training and wherever you train, you hit every single muscle group throughout the week. So whether that is in two workouts or five workouts, you want to make sure that you're hitting every single muscle group in your body. So those muscle groups, if you're just going from the top all the way to the bottom, are your shoulders, your chest, your back, your biceps, your triceps, back of the arm, your quadriceps, the front of the leg, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, and your abs. So all of those areas should be targeted at least one time each week. Now that's my goal, whether I can only get two days a week in, if I have a really busy week and I'm traveling and I know that I'm going to be limited with my gym time, I try to make sure whatever days I am able to train throughout the week that I target at least each muscle group once. If you're training for something specific, like a bodybuilding show and you have a weak area on your body or you are trying to bring up, maybe you're not even competing, maybe you just are trying to improve a specific area in your body, I really don't recommend training a muscle group more than twice a week because in order for it to rebuild and get stronger, it's going to need to rest and recover. Otherwise, you're constantly breaking it down and it's never getting a chance to rebuild and get better. So when you do weight training, you have these little microfiber tears in your muscle tissue that need a, they need time to rebuild and get stronger. And that's how you have more dense muscle tissue. That's how you are able to get stronger. Um, so you, I don't recommend, sorry, Alan is <laughs> a lot of noise. I'm going to shut my door really quickly. Alan, everybody can hear you on the live Q&A. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, so it, you need to have recovery. Um, if it is a smaller muscle group, you could possibly get away with three times, but I really don't recommend hitting major muscle groups more than twice a week. So if you're you know, focused on a specific area of your body and you want to hit it more than once a week, you want to at least make sure that you have about 48 hours in between hitting that same muscle group twice. Um, this will make more sense once we start to structure your actual program, but just to keep that in mind, um, and if you're able to hit the same muscle group more than twice a week, in my opinion, you're probably not targeting it, um, you're not hitting it hard enough. So you're probably not lifting heavy enough, you're probably not hitting it with enough volume, whether that is the number of reps you're using or the amount of weight that you're using or the number of sets you're doing. So um, try to target it with more volume and make sure that you're lifting heavy enough that there's no way you could do more than two times a week because it just not, it needs that time to recover. All right, um, the next thing to consider is there are two different types of exercises. There are compound movements and there are isolation movements. So compound movements are the ones that you are going to get the most bang for your buck. So you're gonna be incorporating multiple muscle groups in one exercise. So I wrote a list of different examples of compound exercises and isolation exercises. I'll just read those off to you. Um, Compound movements, think big moves, the ones that are typically the hardest for you to do. Um, so we have squats, we have uh, lunges, um, deadlifts, uh, I'll just read, hip thrust, um, overhead shoulder press, bench press, push-ups, dips, pull-ups, and rows. When you think of a compound move, it's a multi-joint exercise. So there's two two joints that are bending with to be able to perform that exercise. So, um, for example, when you're doing a pull-up, your, your shoulder is bending as well as your elbow is bending, okay? When you're doing a squat, your hips are bending, your knees are bending. So your multiple joints are, are uh, flexing and extending in that exercise, which means that multiple muscle groups are being used. So... In every workout, you should have a combination of compound movements and isolation movements, which is if, if you ever do any of my workouts, you will always see a combination of both. Sometimes I use isolation movements to kind of warm up the specific muscles that I'm doing before I move into a big compound move. You're going to need some warm-up time before you get into that first movement. Isolation movements are only one exercise. Uh, one joint. Um, so one muscle group is working at a specific time. So uh, pretty much every single bicep curl is a isolation movement. Um, you, you're, the only joint that is moving is your elbow. Your shoulder shouldn't be moving. Nothing else should be moving other than your elbow. So any bicep movement is typically an isolation move. Um, if you're doing triceps, same idea because um, unless you're doing a close grip push-up where you're having multi joints, uh, multiple joints moving at one time, um, but like a, a tricep extension, the only thing that is moving is your elbow. Um, so calf raises are another isolation movement. Um, any lateral front rear delt fly for shoulders. So the only thing when you're doing a lateral raise that is moving is your shoulder. So it's only targeting your shoulder. It's not like your bicep is working at the same time as uh, your shoulder in a lateral raise. I hope this is making sense to you guys. Um, bicep curls, I mentioned all triceps. Chest fly is another one where, I'll give you an example, if you're doing a bench press, in a bench press you have your elbow as well as your shoulder moving. In a chest fly, your elbows are not moving, only your shoulder joint is moving. So yes, they both work your chest, but in a bench press, you're also targeting your triceps. Um, in a chest fly, your triceps are not really engaged at all. Um, leg extension is another one. If you think about a leg extension movement when you're sitting in the seat, the only joint that's moving is your knee. Um, so it's focusing primarily only on your quadricep, where in a squat, you like if you imagine somebody doing a squat, you're gonna see the hip bend and the knee bend, which means your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, and your uh, stabilizing muscle groups are all playing into finishing that movement. Um, hamstring curl, like 
any prone or seated hamstring curl where you're only bending your knees, it's going to be targeting solely your hamstrings. Um, straight arm pull downs on the cable uh, or uh, with the dumbbell and crunches. So the only thing that is moving is uh, your core. So those are some isolation movements. So when you're putting together a workout, you want to have a combination of compound movements as well as isolation movements. Um, I would focus on making your compound movements as strong as possible because you're not going to get as much bang for your buck if you're just focusing on trying to get your, your uh, curls as strong as you can or your flies as strong as you can. You're going to get m the most bang for your buck. And if you're lacking time, you know, do, many, do as many compound movements as your body, as you can fit in um, because you're going to work more than one muscle group for each exercise you're doing. So hopefully you guys are following me so far. Yeah. Okay, so now we've covered kind of the basics of uh, how to set up initially, like what, what a, a workout consists of. Um, now we're going to talk about how you would actually structure your workout. So we go back to one of the first questions we asked, and that is how many days per week can you com commit to your workout program? If you're training two days a week, so I'll hold this up as I'm talking. Hopefully it might be backwards actually. Sorry, guys, I can't write reverse. All right, maybe it's easier if I just tell you. Um, so write these down. Um, if you are training only two times a week, you have two different options. You could either train total body twice, or you could do an upper body day and a lower body day. I would recommend doing an upper body day and a lower body day because you're going to be able to um, hit each muscle group with more volume. It's, if you only have 45 minutes to an hour, it's really difficult to hit every single muscle in your body um, in that time frame and hit it with enough volume to actually increase your strength. So I would definitely recommend you know upper body day, lower body day. So with each workout, you should have anywhere from, I would say, five to eight different exercises. I think a good rule of thumb is to have anywhere from 25 to 30 sets within a workout. So if you have eight exercises and you're doing um, three sets of each, that's about 24 sets. So that's kind of how you figure that out. Um, so in that case, there might be some exercises where you do uh, five sets or six sets, um, and then you maybe do less exercises. So I think 25 to 30 is, is kind of usually where I stick around for most of the trainings that we do, the workouts that we do, and that I do. Um, unless the reps are super high. So in Armageddon, for example, that workout, if you guys have done that, um, the reps are really high. Every single exercise has 20 reps, um, but the set volume isn't quite as high. So I think I only did three sets of like five different uh, supersets. So yeah. If you're doing three days a week, a really great way to make sure that you're targeting every single muscle group in three days is to do a push-pull split. I ideally like to do a push-pull split if I am traveling and I'm not able to get all of my, um, if I'm only able to train three days a week. So push day is all the muscle groups that you're pushing with. So if you think about the actual movements that you're doing, um, any type of, type of chest exercise is a push. Your chest pressing, shoulder pressing. So any shoulder exercises it, uh, consists of a push as well as triceps, so tricep push down, um, extension, you're actually pushing on all of those movements. That is considered a push day. Uh, pull day would be anything where you're actually pulling the bar or pulling down or pulling toward you, which works your, hopefully you said, back. So on a pull day, it consists of back exercises, bicep exercises, and I, I usually throw in rear delt exercises in a pull day because um, like for example, face pull is for rear delts, so you're actually pulling it towards you. So anything in the back of the body would be part of a pull day, and then the third day would be legs. Um, another option for three days a week would be a leg day, chest and back, and then shoulders and arms. So that's another uh, way that you could break up all the muscle groups and uh, hit them all in three days. So when it comes to hitting the smaller muscle groups like abs and calves, I typically will hit calves on a leg day and abs on an upper body day. So if I'm doing a push-pull legs split, 
I would do abs twice and calves once. Um, if you're training four days a week, a good split for four days a week would be legs, back and biceps, chest and triceps, and shoulders. Um, I'm going to kind of go a little off right now. Um, you guys following me so far? Hopefully you are. It might help to watch this over again. But if you are targeting back and biceps, when you're doing back exercises, you're you are also incorporating your biceps in all pulling movements. You're incorporating your biceps. So um, any type of row, any type of pull down, you're also using your biceps. Just like when you're doing chest and you're pushing, you're also incorporating your triceps. So keep it that in mind when you are training back. I would not like start your uh, workout with biceps because it could affect your strength when doing the bigger movements that your back requires. Same thing with uh, chest and triceps. I wouldn't really start my workout with triceps unless I wanted to pre-fatigue my arms before doing chest because the bigger muscle groups require more energy to push and if you're already fatigued before you do those bigger movements, your strength is going to go down a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so back and biceps work together and chest and triceps work together. So um, some workouts that I've created or you may have seen work with antagonistic muscle groups. Um, so for example, the front and the back of the body, chest is antagonistic to back, just like um, uh, chest would be with triceps. So when, I'm sorry, chest with biceps. So when you're doing chest movements, like you're doing pressing, your biceps really aren't doing much work. And when you're doing back, your triceps aren't doing much work. So it might be a better idea to do back with triceps and chest with biceps. Uh, for five days a week, um, this was actually... This is actually my favorite way to structure my my five day a week plan. Um, I do back, shoulders, legs, chest, and arms. Um, I love doing it that way. That way, I am able to hit each of those muscle groups with a lot of different angles. Um, so when you're doing back, for example, you want to do rowing movements. You want to do uh, pull down movements. You want to hit it from all different angles. Same thing with shoulders. You're not just going to do all presses during your workout. You're going to also do some front exercises, some side exercises, some back exercises, you know, rear delt exercises. Um, with legs, you're not just going to squat the whole time. There's a lot more to do with your legs. So you're going to do some glute stuff, some hamstring stuff, some calf stuff. So you want to try to hit your muscle with as mon many angles as possible. Um, if you're doing six days a week, you could do a push-pull legs, push-pull legs. That would be an ideal split, in my opinion, to hit each muscle group twice. So if your goal is to really maximize your time in the gym, try to gain as much muscle as you can, and your body is recovering efficiently, doing a push-pull legs and then repeating it again throughout the week will allow you to hit six days a week each muscle group twice. Another option for six days a week would be shoulders, uh, quad focused workout for legs, back, chest with arms, glutes and hamstrings, and then back again. So let's say this person is really trying to build their back up and they want to target their back twice a week. Um, as long as you have those 48 hour rest periods in between hitting the same muscle group twice, you can do it that way too. Um, so that's why a push pull leg split works really great if you do have six days a week because um, you have two days in between in between hitting your legs again and two days in between hitting your push muscle groups again. Um, so that allows you to recover efficiently and um, maximize your workouts. So those are you'll notice that I don't have like one day a week. I don't really recommend only lifting one day a week unless that's your only option. Um, and then I don't have seven days a week because I do recommend having a rest day. And I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, I don't know what to do on a rest day. I have really hard time. Maybe do yoga or maybe just devote that rest day to stretching and recovering. And um, it's good to kind of uh, refuel you, re-energize your mind uh, for the next week coming up. So I don't recommend just one day. I don't think you're going to get enough um, you're not going to see as much because you're resting so long. Um, but seven days a week could be a little overkill. Um, I'll talk a little bit about rep ranges and, um, also, 
your need for maximizing time? That was another uh, question I kind of touched on a little bit at the beginning, um, but a lot of you guys were like, oh, it's so busy in the summer, I don't know how I'm going to get everything in. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to maximize your time and some of the things that I incorporate to uh, make my workout shorter but also efficient. So when it comes to rep ranges, um, the lower your rep ranges are, the more strength your focus is. Um, strength does not always equate to muscle gain, though. That's why you could see a power lifter who can lift a ton of weight but doesn't have a ton of mass. Um, when you're lifting in like the one to three, four, five rep ranges, um, you are focused primarily on um, power and strength, not really benefiting uh, hypertrophy, which is the the range you want to be in for muscle gain, and that is anywhere from like 15, uh, uh, 8 all the way to about 15. Um, so I think that if you are looking to uh, really maximize your strength and power, do some some exercises that are lower rep, so with the big compound moves when you're trying to increase your strength. Um, it's, it's fun to be able to bring those numbers down and just to see how much you can get. Um, but when it comes to maximizing your muscle gain and hypertrophy, the, the best rep range is really between 8 and 15. Um, I, I think most people get stuck on that number, though, because I could say do 8 reps, but if you just do 8 reps, but you really could do 15 reps with the weight that you use to do 8 reps, it's not going to do the same. Um, so I, I like to just say... Do as many reps as you can with the weight that you're using and make sure that at the end of that set, you're really struggling because if you finish that set and let's say you did 15, but you could all, all you could do another 10, that's not heavy enough for you to gain enough, gain more muscle and more strength. You've got to have what, what we mentioned earlier, progressive resistance. Um, if you just want to maintain where you're at, um, I would say muscular endurance would be the way that you would structure your workouts, and that would be rep ranges 15 and above. Um, and that is consistently. I'm talking about consistently in the gym. Uh, there are times where I will throw in workouts that are higher rep ranges, um, like Armageddon, for example. For most of us, it was incredibly difficult because the volume was so high. But you hopefully were using a weight that you're really struggling by the last you know, five to seven uh, reps of that set. Um, sometimes throwing in those exercises can shake your, you know, shock the system. It can make things more challenging and make, makes things more fun. But regardless of the rep ranges you're using, making sure that you are lifting as heavy as you can for as many reps as you can. Um, that's a good gauge for you to determine whether or not you are lifting heavy enough. Um, I think it's totally fine to reach failure most of the time. Um, to really feel that burning and the, the blood flow uh, into the muscle group. So when it comes to isolation movements that we talked about earlier, using higher rep ranges for that is, is okay because um, they're, they recover very quickly, um, but it doesn't really make sense to lift super, super low rep with a tricep extension, for example. Um, however, when you're doing a squat or a bench press, it makes more sense because those exercises are a lot more difficult. So compound movements, you're going to probably be able to use the lower rep ranges more often than you would with an isolation exercise. Um, so if uh, you are changing up the rep ranges fairly often in your workout, I think you're probably going to be, um, you're going to be able to see how much more weight you can use when your rep ranges are lower. So if you're doing one day where you're doing 15 reps and the next day you go in and you do 8 reps but you're using the same weight, there's something wrong there. <laughs> you should be able to see a significant difference between the weight that you use when you do you know, 12 to 15 reps versus the weight that you do when you do you know, 6 to 8. If there's not a ton of difference, then I would um, increase your weight when the reps go down. That makes sense, right? So you're not going to be able to do as many reps if the weight is heavier. Um, but that's where I like to incorporate a lot of different rep ranges. Um, I think it was in the build challenge last year where we had the different phases where each, uh, week we changed up the rep ranges. So you could see the change in the increase in weight that you could use 
for that same exercise each week because the rep ranges were different. So ideally, 8 to 15 reps is where you're going to get the most muscle gain. Um, if you're just trying to maintain a specific area, then I would keep your rep ranges higher for that specific muscle group. Um, but try to really increase your weight used with, of course, proper form and making sure that you're struggling. So I, I like in my head not to get so stuck on a specific number, but to think, okay, I'm going to try to get as many as I can with this amount of weight. Um, as far as maximizing time, I would incorporate intensity techniques. Um, so I'm not sure if you mean maximizing time trying to get cardio in as well as weight training or if you're just trying to maximize your time with the weight training. Um, I do think that when it comes to cardio in the summer, it can be a lot easier to incorporate cardio because you can go outside. I mean, it doesn't have to be balls to the wall on a stair mill. It could be going outside and going for a walk, you know, just keeping it consistent and doing something physical, physically active each day is going to be um, like the purpose of cardio really is to keep your heart strong. So if there's a way that you can incorporate cardio at some point in the day, maybe it's just 10 minutes at a time, it's better than, than doing nothing in my opinion. Um, you're also going to have a lot more, uh, better recovery and you're going to feel stronger. Your heart is going to be healthier. You're not going to get out of breath as easy if you can incorporate some cardio during the day. Um, that could be just taking the stairs or parking really far in a parking lot and going all the way, you know, making more time to just walk throughout the day, getting your steps in however you can. Um, but like I said, it doesn't have to be like grinding in the gym and making your time, uh, making time to devote, you know, 30 minutes to an hour each day at the gym. So if you are talking about getting cardio as well as, um, strength training in and just maximizing your time, getting into the gym one time a day. And let's say, like if you have an hour and a half each day to devote into your training, what I would do is 45 minutes of um, strength training and then I would probably do 30 to 40 minutes of cardio. Um, maybe take the last, maybe 30 minutes of cardio and take the last 10 minutes and stretch because I know no, a lot of you guys don't stretch enough. And as we get older, the more important that is. Um, if you only have an hour, I would do you know 40 minutes of weight training, 20 minutes of cardio. If you have 30 minutes, what I would do is incorporate some cardio in between your sets. So maybe you incorporate a cardio acceleration workout, or maybe you do some plyo in between, or maybe you uh, do a really like hard five minute Tabata before you begin your weight training, then you weight train, and then you do another five to 10 minutes at the end that's really hard. So the shorter duration that you have to do cardio, the harder it should be. You shouldn't be like leisurely walking on a treadmill because you only have 10 minutes. Like if I only have a very short period of time, you better believe I'm going balls to the wall as hard as I can. If I have more time, my intensity isn't going to be as high. But if I'm short on time for weight training, I incorporate a lot of intensity techniques. Things like supersets, tri-sets, giant sets, where a superset is two exercises back to back. So you're doing an exercise, going straight into another exercise, and then resting and then repeating it again for however many sets you do. A tri-set is just that, it's three exercises in a row before you rest, um, and you repeat that multiple times. So you can get more exercises in, and more sets in, more reps in, in a shorter period of time. Um, giant set is just another name for a circuit, um, doing multiple exercises in a row. Maybe you choose you know, six exercises, and you do um, one after another after another, and you just go in a big circuit. That's another way for you to incorporate more um, muscle groups, uh, more exercises into a short period of time. Or you can do what I've done multiple times for you guys is cardio acceleration, where you have a timer and you do a uh, weight training exercise, then you go straight into a cardio. Then you go back to weight training and go straight into cardio. Um, so that's a way for you to get both at the same time. If you are doing circuits and cardio acceleration, but your goal is to gain muscle, you are going to be limited. I wouldn't do that all the time if your goal is to build muscle. So maybe you only have 30 minutes, five days a week. Two of those days, I would do something more intense. And three of those days, I would lift as heavy as I can. Um, so that's probably how I would structure it. But again, I really feel like the summer, you have less excuses than you do in the winter to get some cardio in. 
and even a little bit is really better than nothing. Um, wake up a little earlier, go to bed a little earlier, go to the gym just a little earlier to get some in before you start training or after you start training. Um, go for a bike ride with your kids. Um, do some jumping jacks in your in your garage or your living room. You know, there's always a way I feel like that you can fit it in. Um, you know, go up and down your stairs ten times. You know, uh, it all adds up. Ideally, it would be great if you could do it all at one time. But if you can't, I mean, the more more activity that you can do, just the better you're going to feel overall. And if your goal is fat loss and weight loss, um, that's just going to help you get there uh, faster. So there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of information here. So if you do have, um, if you didn't write notes, I do recommend kind of watching this through because it, it is a lot more detailed um, than, you know, some may, may realize. And I think um, taking some of those things into consideration as far as like, Literally, how many days can you train a week and where are you training and what are your goals is the basic before you even begin creating any type of program. Um, when I am doing a triathlon, the triathlon is my focus. Uh, so majority of my training is devoted to getting better at that specific thing. Um, but if I am in a muscle building mode where I really want to increase my um, my um, my muscle mass, then I'm going to be focusing primarily on that. Um, it's really difficult to do a lot of cardio and build muscle, um, so just make sure that you're keeping that in mind. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. I'll answer a few of your questions, but I think um, hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, not enough energy to work muscles and get cardio in. Three-day push-pull leg and three-day cardio in between muscle workouts sound all right. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. I think it's fine. Is it more effective to train back twice a week and only doing three or four different exercises and adding in another body part, or is it best to do a back day with five or six moves? I think this depends on how much time you have and what your goals are. Um, so I I would rather, like personally, I'd rather do more exercises with the bigger muscle group and less with the smaller because every single back exercise you do, you're also going to be targeting your biceps if that's the muscle group you're training with your back. So I think that like if I'm training back, I typically do about five or six exercises um, and maybe I superset a smaller muscle group with that. Um, unfortunately, we don't sell previous challenges. Um, in weeks when you can only do four days but still want to hit muscle groups two times a week, what do you think of upper, lower, legs, full body? Um, in that case, I would probably do upper, lower, upper, lower. Mm, because if you're doing upper, lower, then legs, then full body, you're hitting legs three times in a row. I would do upper and then lower and then rest and then upper and then lower and then rest, rest. Um, yeah, and 10 exercises is a lot of volume. If you're doing you know, three or four sets of each, that could be anywhere from 30 to 40 sets. That workout will probably take you an hour and a half. Awesome, Kat. That's great. All right, you guys. Um, that's all I have for today. So if you have any additional questions on this, just post below and then I'll answer them later. But um, next week I'm actually going to be in Michigan. I get to see my, my nephew, so I won't be doing the Q and a or a video next week, but the following week, um, I will be doing a live, um, foam rolling together. So we'll foam roll live. Uh, we'll do that together. So if you don't have a foam roller, I highly recommend you get one. If you have it and you don't know how to use it, we're going to do that in two weeks. Um, I'll probably stop in at some point in the next two weeks just to check in with you guys and also to answer any questions that you have on the live on the challenge coming up um but yeah i leave wednesday and i come back monday so i'm gonna just have a ton of family time next week so i appreciate you guys joining in with me um i will leave this at the top if you want to rewatch it i always save the videos so uh feel free to check in at any time and take those notes so i appreciate you guys hope that helps you out and i will see you in the next one